Looking at this Kirk Leatham centrepiece, I really love the weight of it and just the sturdiness of the thickness of the metal. And this soupturine here feels very heavy, so it's a real status symbol. I like the fact that it's oval because it's got a really nice comfortable handle to, to take the lid off. Like this shape here is quite comfortable to hold to pick up, so I can really appreciate the design. These caster stands can be used in any of these square holes around the base of the piece, so it can be used in any circumstances really. One thing I like about the engraving of this coat of arms on the centre of the dish is just how it catches the light and it gives a kind of iridescent finish. And it's also the coat of arms is used to define which family the piece belonged to. I really like these casters, which would have been used for dry spices or sugar. And just to, to even be able to get sugar would have been a huge status symbol for the family because it was such a rarity in those days. I really like how this bezel of the caster, you can see the hammer marks. So it shows how a silversmith has carefully hammered it in order to make it fit into that really tightly. I can really tell how much effort went into achieving this high finish, which in those days might have mostly been done by hand, although they might have had some kind of motor to polish the final finish on it. What's really nice about getting closer to these pieces is that you can look inside and see how they might have been made. So it looks like the bottom part of this caster was hand raised because I can see hammer marks from the stake inside. So hand raising is a process where a vessel is made from a flat sheet of silver by hammering it over metal stakes. And also just sort of feeling inside, you can feel a seam where this top part would have been made out of a tube and then soldered on. So it's really nice to see the inside of these pieces. In this centrepiece, there's different shapes being used in different ways. So there's the oval shape on the tureen and then there's also the octagonal shapes coming through in different ways. So on this oil pourer, we've got the octagonal mount and then the glass is also octagonal, but it's got these curved facets, which is quite, quite a nice twist. What's really nice is also how this um, oil pourer fits into the stand perfectly, and it's also in an octagonal shape. So this fruit dish would have been made using a technique called sinking, which would have been done on an edge, and then the recess here would have been blocked out on air using this edge to form the crease here. Just looking at the underside of this dish, it's really fascinating to see how the solder has moved where it shouldn't have done. <laughs> and, and also because of the fluting in this dish, there's slight holes in, in the soldering, but given the technology that they had at the time, I think they did well to, uh, to get that, that join.